Um, so this is a, a little bit older person, but you know, a pretty uh, joint depression injury, not a lot of intraarticular comminution. Um, I guess there is maybe more than I thought, but here you can see that there's kind of one big piece here. If you look at the coronal coronal views, I don't know if that's showing up on your, on your view or not. Um, and, uh, so here you can see depressed, I, you know, pretty, pretty depressed in this case. She's pretty active. You know, it's a little bit older to consider surgery, but in this case, I felt like it was depressed enough and, and that, you know, now with sinus incisions and such, um, I felt like it's, it's a little more safe to go ahead. And, and especially as you've pointed out in an acute setting, uh, fixing these earlier, um, may avoid some issues, especially if you're using a, a sinus incision. Um, the other thing on this one here, I'm going to kind of scroll through here. If you look at the soft tissue windows on the axial view, and I, my, my mouse here is kind of pointing it out, but there, if you look at the fibula there, you can see these, there's a flex sign, and then the perineal tendons are dislocated in this case as well. So another reason why thinking about perhaps fixing this, uh, fixing this calcaneus fracture. Do you have an age cutoff, Jan, for a calc fracture to fix it? No, and I think these are great indications for this patient. I think you have the perineal uh, dislocation and then the amount of depression. I, I mean, like I can't imagine this not hurting if treated non-operatively. So, but I think in the, if we base in the Canadian study, I think this would have been non-op immediately. Yeah, I don't I think, think so they would too. have considered, right? I think they would have been, yeah. um, so I, I think that you I think you have a good plan here. So the plan is using a sinus incision. You know, this is going to kind of some of the things you talked about earlier. And, and I think you have to think about it even more when you get into a sinus incision in terms of a technique and having additional trips, uh, tips for pulling that heel out of varus, but chance pin into that tuberosity fragment. And then, uh, you know, uh, uh, this case, they used a freer through the primary fracture line and then trying to swivel that tuberosity um, out of varus. And, and I probably wasn't, you know, as aggressive maybe, but then I try to put the K wires and you probably want two OK wires in this case too, don't you think? To, to, to kind of preload them into the tuberosity, pull it out of varus and then run them up into the, into the medial side. Yeah, I, I, and I try to preload it. I mean, it's easier said than done. Yep, for uh, sure. But I, I like putting them in the heel and then, you know, because once you get it, it's like fire the K-wires across, right? Yes. And, and to yep. hold your reduction. So, and this, especially this patient, what I would be worried about and always concerned about is uh, with her bone quality, um, with that chance pit in the back. If, you know, I've, I've sometimes just kind of made uh, a mushy bone even more mushy. Yep. I think, and, and to your point, you really only get one or two shots at that, right? So you almost have to get kind of everything lined up, ready to go, because if you're doing it over and over again, that chance pin is going gonna, is gonna to get loose uh, pretty quickly, especially in this patient. So you, you really have to think about that. Um, Jan, I saw somebody, I think it was on social, that um, showed, you know, put using two OK wires um, on the medial side like we have here. And then just swapping these for like, um, I think it was two seven screws, because, you know, if you think about a two, a two seven screw, is, a lot of times has the same core diameter as a two OK wire. Um, I kind of like that idea, although it's, that's maybe easier said than done. You could use a cannulated screw, which I think is what I ended up using in this case. And that's probably just technically a little bit easier, but some different rationale or different thought processes on how you can approach them technique wise. Yeah, and that's another thing is to know the size of the wires because whether the K wire, if they can fit into the um, cannulated screws, because I've sometimes yep. used K wires and then swapped it out with a cannulated screw. So yep. if I got a wire in a great position, and so that's a nice uh, a tip or trick that, you know, you don't always have to have the surgeon switch to your K wire. Um, as long as it can fit in the screw, it should work fine. Yep. So it's important to know what size of your K wires are, and then and then you can figure out what the what the length is going to be with you know a little bit of a little bit of math. So in this case here, we got that I think pretty well pulled out of Varus, and then we got our K wires um, kind of holding things, and then we used one of these wave plates uh, through a sinus incision. But you can see there's a pretty big hole. So in this case, um, we use cement to backfill that area. 
and then use the screw on the medial side to try to hold that piece out of uh, falling into varus. Um, so this would be an example in which some, you know, cases when I'll backfill that area. Uh, I know they've described using allograft, but also um, uh, some, you know, bone substitute or uh, artificial bone substitute as well. What are you using, Jan? I'm usually using allograft chips. Um, and that's a lot of it. I mean, I haven't seen a huge difference uh, with the use of like syrup, you know, with, with calcium phosphate. Um, and one, one of the reasons would be cost. I sure. mean, that could, that could be fairly costly um, cement that you use. And I worry if it's actually going to, how long it stays in. But it, I think for these patients, when they're, they're at poor bone quality, I, it, cement's probably the better, better um, substitute than bone if they were younger. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, okay, and here's our follow-up as a couple of weeks in, things are kind of hanging in there. And this is at six months. And, you know, I think, you know, that, that, the, the bone, the, the cerement resorbed over time. You can't even really tell it was there and everything kind of held fixation and overall was back able to get back home. And, and, and so I'm pretty happy with the way that, that this came along. Yeah, All right. That looks fantastic. That looks Thank fantastic. You. And I like that the cement, like you said, it uh, went away. Cause sometimes you see some of the phosphate cements stay for a very long time. Yeah, yeah. This uh, did not as I mean, at least the the radio opaque portion, uh, or you know, the whatever you know makes it uh, radio opaque. At least that part went away. 